principles here, which is do you just follow orders, even if they are obviously for war crimes, or do you stand by your conscience? And I think all the international law that followed World War II shows that you are breaking the law if you just follow orders and do illegal things. So I think the stand he took, the fact that he wanted to try and make a difference, and he said this explicitly, both privately and publicly, he wanted to make a difference, he wanted to inform the world's people about the war crimes being committed and he wanted to stop future illegal wars it was a noble thing to do i think he knew the risks he did a very brave thing will he make any difference though will the us and other countries continue to pursue their foreign policy and military campaigns despite what has been revealed well, I think he already has made a difference, um, not just in sparking a debate about some of these issues, but also in accelerating the US withdrawal from some of the countries in the Middle East militarily, which will, of course, have saved further US military lives, as well as the lives of the people in those countries. So I think he has already made a difference. The fact that we are debating these sort of issues, and we know that war crimes have been committed, particularly the uh, revelation of the collateral murder video, which showed that uh, innocent Iraqis and journalists were being shot up in some sort of sick snuff type video um, and also that the Pentagon had lied about it for years has exposed the fact that we cannot trust our governments, our military and our intelligence not to lie to us and not to commit war crimes. So I think that's very important. I have to say though that 35 years in prison for exposing war crimes of others is an incredibly high and vindictive sentence to give to a young man who acted on his conscience. But he should have been charged though, shouldn't he not? Um, people, whistleblowers like uh, Bradley Manning aren't above the law. He did break the law, didn't he? He did, and he knew what he was doing, but I think uh, the response has been disproportionate. So, for example, in the UK, if you blow the whistle on the military or the intelligence agencies, you face two years in prison. Even if you betray your country to a foreign and hostile power, you face 14 years in prison. And yet he's facing 35 years in prison for exposing the crimes of others, which have yet to be investigated, by the way. So it's uh, the disproportionality that is troubling. I have to say as well, though, I think there is a crying need as our countries get more and more involved militarily and with drone strikes and with extraordinary rendition and with torture and with CIA kill lists, there is a crying need now for some sort of avenue to be provided for young men and young women of conscience to come forward and say, we are troubled by this, we would like an investigation, and not have to risk the, the rest of their lives being locked up in a maximum security prison by doing that, because they are actually providing a service to our democracies. But do you really believe that you mentioned the crimes of others, that those who have been exposed as seemingly doing very bad, wrong things will be held to account? Will there be any judicial process? Because after all, these are authorities from governments. Uh, well, yes, that is always the problem. And there have been many, many whistleblowers coming out of both the UK and the US intelligence agencies over the last two decades, and nothing much ever seems to change. And that is a problem, I think, for our democracies. However, it seems that new whistleblowers are learning from the mistakes of the others. So, for example, with Edward Snowden, his view was that the more draconian the pushback against whistleblowers, the smarter the whistleblowers will get, the more tactical they will get, the more um, careful they will get about how they expose wrongdoing by our governments. And that's precisely what Edward Snowden has done. So I think he obviously looked at the Bradley Manning case and, you know, the appalling torture and human, uh, unhuman and degrading treatment that was meted out to him, and he acted um, accordingly yes, to but, protect but Snowden's himself. Facing so a very un Snowden is facing a very uncertain fate, isn't he, along with Assange, and of course we have seen what's happened to Bradley Manning. You don't think that this sort of thing is a message to whistleblowers, it will not put them off, or will it actually encourage them? Well, of course, it's supposed to be a message to whistleblowers to stop them from doing this in future. However, I think it will make them more determined. I mean, I'm sure there are young men and young women sitting behind desks in intelligence agencies and the military in our countries now thinking, well, this is terrible. What am I going to do about it? And how do I survive the process? And that is why it's so important that Assange and Snowden survive their processes. And I think in the case of um, the WikiLeaks uh, secret grand jury that has been convened in Virginia over the last two years, the basis for trying to prosecute Assange and WikiLeaks was that Bradley Manning was aiding the enemy. Now, Bradley Manning was acquitted of aiding the enemy, which means that the publisher of his material cannot now be, surely, accused of aiding the enemy and um, uh, being charged under the Espionage Act. So I think this is a very interesting time for the attempts to try and prosecute the WikiLeaks case in America as well. Annie, really interesting to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks very much indeed. Annie Mashon, live there in Dusseldorf. Thank you.